Well, it's that time of the year again when ArchiCAD has just released their new version 27, and now it's time to go in and start setting up our work environment, which we recommend doing with every single new release and setting it up from scratch. Now, you don't want to go in and import a previous version's work environment into the new build because then you may lose out on some commands and toolbars, and it's just not best practice. So why is the work environment so important? Well, it really defines the big picture for how we work in and use the ARCHICAD commands, toolbars, palettes, and our overall workflow. So if you want to improve your efficiency in ARCHICAD, then dialing in your work environment is one of those essential steps. And it's an enjoyable thing to do because as you go through the process, you really get to pick and choose what information, what commands, what short keys you want to use. And by going through that process, it helps you learn and understand your own setup even better. So in this video today, we're going to break down the process for setting up your work environment into seven easy steps. And for those who want to just kind of jump ahead and go ahead and download the work environment that we've already set up for the ContraBIM template here on version 27, then you can jump over to our blog. We have a full article where we go even deeper on how we like to set it up. Um, but for those who want to follow along and see our process, then we will cover it here over these next seven steps. So step number one, let's go ahead up to options, jump into our work environment dialog box. And within our work environment here, we really have six main schemes that we can work with. We have our user preferences, company standards, shortcuts, tools, workspace, and command layouts. Now, one of the first steps that I like doing is just going through and storing a custom scheme for each one of these. So you'll notice here, as I click on these, you'll see we have the ContraBIM standards, we have the ContraBIM shortcuts, we have ContraBIM tools, and our workspace, and our command layouts. Now, our top level here, this is where we actually save our profiles. And as we're going through this video, what we'll do here is we're going to create a new profile. I'm going to call this the ContraBIM Presentation 27, and we're going to use this as a pre presentation type profile. So, okay, so we've now created a new profile. And as we're going through, we're going to make a few tweaks to our existing profile so you can see how we can save and update all of those as we move our way through. But first step is we just go through and we set up all of our schemes and then we can go in and we can edit what information or what schemes are associated with that particular profile. So, okay, so that would be step one. Step two is to really tackle these first two groupings, our user preference schemes. Now, we're not going to go through all of these settings here in this video, but I do want to just point out a few of the highlights, one of them being this first uh, checkbox here, which is hide lock layers and pop-up palettes. I'd recommend to have that unchecked unless you have a very specific reason for going in and hiding lock layers in the pop-up palettes. I found that some users, if that's checked, then they won't understand why they don't see all their layers when they go in to reassign a layer in their design tools. So a few other things I want to point out is I always like having the pet palette and the text positioning jump to a preferred position. That way you always know where it's going to be when you go to jump into uh, your pet palettes or your text. And I always like having it pretty much right in the top center of the screen. Now, most of these settings here are default, so we're not going to talk about all of them, but I do want to touch on a few important ones. And under our more options, we definitely have a few important ones that I want to point out. So with version 27, we have two new options here, which is the enable physical physically based rendering in 3D. Now this is kind of like a partially rendered view when we're looking at it in 3D. Uh, we'll do another video on that. Um, so we won't go get into it in this video, but in my current profile, I'm leaving that turned off because I like having more vibrant colors. I like working with contours in 3D, contour lines. And so for that reason, I'll have that turned off. Now, we also have a new one called Enable Distance Guides. This is a very useful one. And we'll, let's turn that on. And what's useful here is we can actually toggle that. You can see up in my toolbar up at the top, our standard toolbar, we've added a few commands here to turn that off and on and to redefine whether it's from a edge or a reference line for where those guides are enabled. So that's in another, these are two important settings that I just want to point out here with version 27. A few other 
important options here are this assign new element ID to each new element. That's one I always like to uncheck because I don't like it to uh, start counting the numbers on our element IDs. Another one I wanna point out is this create detail worksheet boundary. So when you add a new detail and you actually jump to that detail viewpoint, this will create a boundary. So uncheck that if you don't want that boundary line to be uh, turned on. Let's move along here. Um, the redraw, these are all pretty default. Our on-screen options, this is another one here, the show contours on favorites and library part previews. That's a nice way to actually see those contour lines as it's going to be displayed in 3D when you're looking at your library part in the object settings before you go and place it. So that's a good one. Same with tweaking this master items on your layout. That's another good one to go in and adjust as needed. Also, this source marker color, I like kind of uh, adjusting that so that when you turn on your source markers here in your on-screen display options up top, um, then you can customize that setting. So that's another one. The company standards, I essentially use the, the defaults for the most part. I do turn it on to safe from ultra safe just because I like, I think five minutes is a good increment and I feel like it does speed up uh, the program a little bit. Um, you can change your undo limits, I believe, up to 99 as the max, but pretty much everything else here is default. So that would be really step two. Go through and set up your user preferences and your company standards. Now, step three is going to be diving into our tool schemes and particularly our toolbox. Now, if you notice over on the far left of our workspace here, we have our toolbox turned on and you'll notice we have design, viewpoint, document, ductwork, piping, cabling, and structural. Now you'll see over here on the right side of our toolbox settings, we have, we have those same groupings. And you'll notice down here, we have ductwork, piping, cabling, and structural. We've actually had to go in and create new groups for these and going through here we can assign tools to those new groups so that's how we've created these and um, it's a quick process and uh, that's that way i like to have all the tools turned on and just through that method we can quickly create those groupings and add all of our tools i will note here for our ductwork that we do have different tools associated with version 27 same thing with piping same thing with cabling so they've rebuilt these tools again we're going to do another video on this to dive deep into those new workflows for using the new mep tools uh, but for this video, I just wanted to point out how you can add those to your work environment. Okay, let's move along here. So our tool settings and dialog boxes, this is what you get when you actually go in and open up the dialog for your selection settings. So these are the big panels that we have within that dialog box. And I generally just leave these as is. I don't like to rearrange these really. But what I do like to rearrange is our info box. So when we click on one of these, you'll notice here at the top, we've rearranged our ID and properties and classifications. Usually these are located down at the bottom as part of the default profile. I always like raising those up so that they are uh, pretty much right at the top of the info box, which I have docked in this location of the workspace. That way, um, really we're starting from the most important thing at the top, which is our layer, then our ID and properties, our classifications, then we get into the details of those tools. So that's another important one that I like to go through each and every tool here and rearrange to have those IDs and properties and classifications at the top of the list. Okay, next one here. So our next step would be toolbars. So going into our toolbars, this is really where you can customize the different commands that we have associated with our toolbars. So our 3D visualization is one that we will go through, make a few adjustments. I always like adding these uh, texture base commands down at the bottom. I also like removing a few commands that take up a lot of space and are not really necessary. Uh, more on that in the blog. You can go and see it before and after for how we've customized these, as well as you can download our profile there from our blog. The other one that we've made some big adjustments on is our tool or our standard toolbar, in which case we've gone through and we've added our new uh, show distance guides as well as the toggle between our edges and our reference lines. A quick tip over here on the left, if you go through and just search for all new commands in alphabetical order, this is going to list all the different tools and commands that are associated specifically with ARCHICAD 27. So that's a nice way to just 
uh, filter down the new content so you can make sure you can pick these up and add them to your toolbars as needed. A few other things here, we've added our design option manager as well as our design options. So that's now added to our standard toolbar, which is our main toolbar here at the top of our screen. And we can see over here, those new design options commands. So once we've gone through and we've tackled all of these first five steps. So the customizing the toolbars would be step five. And I will just point out that we have created a few uh, custom toolbars here for accessories, functions, as well as our tools and profiles. These we have up in the top left. It's just a nice way to toggle those things off and on really quickly. Um, you can create new custom toolbars just by going into this option and setting those up there. So once we've gone through and done all that, then the next step is really to customize our workspace scheme. And that is a process of going through and turning off and on our different toolbars and palettes. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a little bit of customization here on this presentation workspace. And I'm actually just going to go in, we're going to turn off our toolbox, we're going to turn off our info box, our trace and reference in our renovation, we're going to turn off our organizer here. So we're really just kind of maximizing our space that we have available here within our view. So by doing that, we can go back into our work environment. And we are going to go to our workspace scheme. And what I'm going to do under our workspace scheme is we are going to redefine this under our presentation so that now we've updated our presentation workspace. And um, the other thing I'm going to do with this um, while we're making these changes is we're going to go up here to our user preferences. And the other thing I'm going to do is go to our more options and we are going to, if we're under a presentation mode, we're going to enable this physically based rendered in 3D user preference. And so we're going to store this as a ContraBIM presentation preferences 27. Okay. So I'm going to drag that back over. So we're going to store this. So now we have our base one and we have our presentation one. And so now that we've created two new schemes here, we're going to go up to the top and we are going to go in and we are going to edit this one. And then we're going to set those. So we are going to use our presentation as well as our presentation 27 down there. And so now that we've reassigned those, we've created that new profile and we can go in and we can jump back and forth between these two. So we can jump to our productivity profile so we can see how that's been applied. I have noticed the issue manager and the issue organizer, for whatever reason, um, will always get turned on. Even if we update that right now, it will still get turned on. Um, but it's a quick thing to just uncheck those real quick and turn those off. So, but we can also jump over here to our presentation. And when we jump to this one, then you can see that it's going to redefine our workspace. And again, I don't know why it turns those on. I'm going to have to, that seems like a little bit of a glitch here with uh, the issue manager and issue organizer uh, automatically being applied regardless. So, so yeah, that's a way that we can switch back and forth here. And that's also a way that we can create a new profile. So we're just going to switch it back here. And that really concludes our steps here for uh, setting up our profile. So we've gone through, we've set up our schemes. So we're just going to do a quick overview on this. Um, we've gone through, we've saved our different schemes, we saved a new scheme on this one, we've redefined schemes as we've gone through this, we have our workspace scheme. So in this case, I will just point out, if we want to redefine this workspace, like right now, we've turned off those two issues, issue manager and the listing there or the organizer. If we go back to our ContraBIM workspace, we redefine it this way. And that way it gets rid of that custom and we've rebuilt this, um, this workspace. And so Every time you exit out and you come back into the workspace, it's always going to create a custom, by the way. But um, we've gone through, we've redefined that, and that's how you update those. So the last step here is just to make sure that we have backed these up. We're going to go back into our profiles here. We're, we have our productivity. We are going to export this. So we're going to export this just to my documents. So export anyway. We've just re We've written a new version over the top, and then we're also going to export our presentation to our documents. And that's how we can back these up and save these for use um, 
later on or to share with other users. So uh, by the way, if you want to go and download these, then check out the link. It'll take you to our blog. Just fill out the form and we will email you a zip folder with both of these presentation and productivity profiles for Archicad 27. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this work environment that we've set up, then you'll probably love the ContraBIM template. And so go check out more information on that over at ContraBIM.com. And we'll catch you on more tutorials here coming up on the new version of Archicad 27 very soon. And until then, let us know if you have any questions and we'll catch you on another video coming up soon. Thanks for watching.